tonight. We'd like to welcome all of you, those of you who've already joined us and those of you who are joining us right now, to the Friday Night Talk with Inner Space. Tonight's talk is Reclaim Your Inner Calm, Ancient Strategies for Modern Life. And the reality is that we need to be able to tap into a timeless wisdom which allows us to exist in a calm space. Um, particularly when everything else in our world seems to be up in the air. How is it that we can create a sense of stability, a sense of sureness, a sense of calmness and ease in our life um, without having to do anything externally or hard? Tonight's speaker is Michael Timmins. Michael's joining us from Sydney in Australia and it's rather early in the morning, 5.30ish in the morning. So thank you, Michael, for making that time for us. Um, Michael's done a number of things. He's meditated with the organisation for over 35 years. He's one of those early um, people that came to the organisation quite early on and started exploring the reality of meditation and the use of meditation in your life. And so Michael's professional background includes merchant banking. Um, he's been in the treasury. He's worked in finance internationally. He's also been a sales trainer. And currently, well, currently, over the last 25 years, he's created, along with his brother and a close friend, um, that's a bit like a brother, from my point of view, um, a company called Clear Mind. And they are, I think, the most successful importers and distributors of premium non-alcoholic drinks in Australia, working with companies that are um, in national, uh, nationally based, like our Sainsbury's, and small um, boutiques. Michael's going to be sharing with us. After his sharing, um, he's going to do a short meditation. And um, I'm pretty sure you're going to enjoy it because after that, I will be telling you how you can download Michael's meditations um, to be able to use them at home. Um, but between that and the end of his meditation, Michael will be taking your questions. And so if you'd like to post your questions in the questions and answers, I will be then looking at those questions and then asking them to asking your questions on your behalf to Michael. So please do send in your questions. Michael, thank you. Over to you. Good evening, London. Thank you, Artie. I appreciate very much uh, the opportunity to share some of these uh, ancient strategies that I've found and I can assure you you mentioned it's actually more than 45 years I've been studying with uh, Brahma Kumaris and uh, it's um, extraordinary what you can do with some of these ancient strategies but what I would like to do first is I mean I could sit here and entertain you with stories and we could all have a good time but, but what I'd like to do is twice during the time together before the questions is to do um, a practical exercise of meditation and I uh, looked up a version a translation of the word meditation uh, and it, it's, a, it's a Latin word called meditare which means um, it's using your thoughts to connect with healing your heart and in these times of not just lockdown and COVID, but the UK has got moving through the uh, Brexit process, which is uh, an increasingly anxious uh, time for everyone living in the UK. So what I'd like to do first is just do a little, a simple um, exercise that, that will help, uh, because meditation is all these strategies around uh, being peaceful. It's actually working with your thoughts and the thoughts you can't see them you can feel the effect of them 
Um, but how do you do, how do you improve a degree of control over what you think? Because meditation is simply thinking, and it's what I think about that determines my state of mind. So let's begin. And if you're uh, hopefully you're not driving, listening to this, but uh, uh, if you sit sit comfortably. We're going to do uh, the two challenges people have told me over the decades I've been doing this is that I can't relax. And secondly, my mind is going here and there, <laughs> how to um, control the mind. So this is an exercise that takes about two or three minutes. And I always like to start these, <coughs> excuse me, these talks. Uh, these sharings really with a, a practical something that's a tool that you can take away to help you become more peaceful how you can develop your own strategies uh, using these ain't this ancient wisdom so anyone that's done yoga uh, will find some of these exercise this, this exercise a little familiar it's like um, it's a breathing exercise and when you're working with intangible things like your thoughts how do i control it's like trying to catch a slippery fish it's very hard however this is easy so simply put your feet flat on the ground your hands on your lap or in on your knees and just take a deep breath breathing in through your nose and just hold your breath for a moment and then exhale through your mouth And do that again but this time very gently i want you to right bring your shoulders up so take a deep breath in hold it for a moment and then just bring your shoulders around as if you're on an airplane doing all those exercises in between the movies you're watching and exhale and do that once again breathing in through your nose shoulders up and then as you exhale and now once again take a deep breath in through your nose and this is very gently don't stretch anything and turn your head very gently to the right and as you exhale bring your head to the front do that again and then turn your head to the again very gently don't force it just slowly and then bring your head back to the front as you exhale now once again this time turn your head to the left as you exhale bring your head to the front now just once again turn your head to the left and you can keep your eyes closed for this exercise and what I'm going to ask you to do is just focus your awareness your attention on your breathing I'm going to give myself permission just to relax. As I focus on my breathing, I begin to feel a little quieter, a little calmer. begin my inner, inner journey it's like I'm using my thoughts to take a step inside myself 
And I do this by focusing on my breathing. And as I quieten down, I find I'm becoming aware of how much I'm thinking about yesterday, about tomorrow, about this evening, every other place except being present here and now. So as I reel, reel in all my thoughts, all my memories of today or yesterday or five years ago, or, and very calmly become present And by getting in touch with yourself, you begin that inner journey to that place of peace and quiet that is waiting for us all deep inside. This exercise helps calm me down. If you've had a really busy day, just take a few moments to take a deep breath. And then become present in what you're doing. We have a, a relatively short time together tonight. And I want to leave you with some practical tools that can help. Find that calmness, that quietness that's actually inside, not outside. And using my breathing, which is a very big ally, a real helper on this journey to control the quality of what I'm thinking about, not stopping your thoughts, that's a practical impossibility. Just to be quiet. I feel my neck and my shoulders relaxing, my chest, that knots that you might have in your stomach, just relaxing. And then you'll, your legs, your feet, your hands, your shoulders, everything is just starting to relax. And taking another deep breath, and I'm asking you to bring the palms of your hands together at your chest as one does in prayer or devotion and say the word Namaste. And then rubbing your hands together. Welcome back. So just take a moment just to reflect inside yourself. How was that? Was that easy? Was it difficult? What's this guy talking about? I've no idea. <laughs> so just for a moment, just check yourself. And that word namaste is a, a greeting that many of you may know uh, from India and a translation of namaste that I've heard is that I acknowledge the light of peace within you. So how's that? Feeling good? Because one of the strategies that I found that works is little exercises like this, that um, when I first started my spiritual journey, my meditation journey, 
I needed to do some things pretty quickly in my life for health reasons. I was living in London in the mid seventies. I was um, having a sabbatical from my banking life and traveling around Europe and all those things. And I realized because there's nothing like nothing better than an Australian summer than an English winter when you first experience it. And uh, I came to London at the tail end of, excuse me, the tail end of a pretty cold winter in 75. And I knew that I needed to stop smoking. I just, my life slowed down enough to need to address some things. And I was very fortunate that uh, through my brother's um, uh, friendship with a fellow called Charlie, he, um, had, he became, um, aware he started going to the lectures of the BKs by Sister Janty and then he stopped smoking and I wanted to know what are you doing what are you doing <laughs> how did you do it and so I learned uh, through uh, the teachers in London at the time some fundamental things and I found very quickly that one of the strategies that's that helps your peace of mind is your health and nothing is more aw acutely aware at the moment is with COVID is the need to keep the immune system really strong and um, doing healthier things and where possible to do uh, more walk. I, I'm sure everyone's noticed that people are much more aware and health is one of the things that we can talk about this maybe during the Q&A. Um, it's up to me not you, it's up to me to do something practical with these, this spiritual information that you hear about through the Inner Space Network. And the key thing is, and I keep going back to it, is you've got to do something with it. It's not a spectator sport. Uh, many things are, uh, but not, not this. And so when we're going to talk about how to use this meditation experience of this, um, these tools that I've started to do show you is that the two biggest challenges to um, becoming easy with meditation, the first thing is people tell us that they can't relax. Well, that relaxation exercise we just did is from yoga, from yoga relaxation exercises. And the Often the, 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 anx the anxiety, the, the brings of the COVID stuff that we're all going through, you keep uh, stress and tension in your shoulders. Not you, Deckley, but people that we've heard about. Um, they uh, keep the stress and that builds up in the body. So that breathing exercise and stretching just breaks up the um, stiff neck that you may have. And that's you do that two or three times a day. It's like... It's amazing, especially if you're going, you're going into a meeting or you're waiting for the bus or the tube, just for a moment, just do that stretch. And if you're on the phone waiting to speak to someone, it's a perfect time just for 30 seconds, 60 seconds, take a deep breath. And what that, what happens when you do that, when you start, I saw some research recently that into meditation and the effect that the uh, physiological effect of meditation is that most of something like 80% of our thoughts are about everything other than what we're doing here and now. We're thinking about yesterday, we're thinking about tomorrow, we're thinking about relationships that have long passed. And what that does do, what this research told us was that the more you're thinking about yesterday or tomorrow the less you're thinking about being here being present in doing what you're doing and doing it really well and enjoying doing it and you find that when you're not your your mind people describe it your mind is going here and there what it is is that you waste your you you deplete the energy of your inner battery really and that's what we're going to be working with about replenishing our battery to fill it full of peaceful, calm, 
experiences. And what happens when you do that is people say almost instantly without prompting is that they can listen better. Once you take this journey within, you actually become a better listener. You hear yourself, you hear your own, um, uh, your own voice inside that's calling out to be connected with. And it's like meeting an old friend. When you connect with that inner space within yourself, then you're able to connect better with others. And then that's demonstrated in how you deal with people, how you interact commercially in a business sense with your customers. And when something goes wrong, by being more relaxed and being um, pretty content with what you're doing, then as I mentioned to Artie earlier, that just naturally flows through into building better business relationships. And when people fly off the fly off the handle or they're a bit too anxious or they're not having a great day by you maintaining your peaceful state as best you can then that does affect other people then they calm down and then they want to find out how do you do it <laughs> you know? and i i say it um with a bit of a chuckle uh because it's 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 something that's, it's, it's common knowledge. A lot of this information, the spiritually, you can find it on the internet. You, most people will be aware, you know, to pick up some of these key things of spiritual information. But the, the unfortunate thing, it's not common practice. And by practicing, the more you practice, the better the strategies that you can develop to maintain that because once you get it's like a it's like a dividend stream when you buy shares and the stock market goes up you're getting revenue you're getting income and that's what this meditation this spiritual practice is all about it's about bringing um, an income of positive peaceful states of mind and when you practice this all the thoughts that you use you create these thoughts to focus on your breathing to be peaceful to become aware on your journey that there are ways and means that you can um, add into your own life to replace all the stuff that we actually don't need but we sometimes hang on to uh, with all the anxiety that's going through over over Brexit at the moment, on top of the COVID, no wonder everyone's a nervous wreck. However, there are ways that I honestly, if I can do this, anyone can do it. And then the more you practice, it just becomes part of your life. It's not like as soon as the this talk finishes, I become something <laughs> something else. So that's just in a nutshell. That's how you use develop positive states of mind, peaceful experiences in your own life. And then the more you pray, that's the key. I keep saying it, you've got to practice. There's not much use learning a lot of this stuff if you actually don't do anything with it. And you'll see that prosperity, inner prosperity starts to grow in a very positive way. And then like I, ne I never thought I could, to be honest, that I could stop smoking. I used to, you see, every time you see these photos, these news alerts of, you know, interest rates go up or down and the, you know, the news reports of people in screaming at each other and in these dealing rooms with lots of telephones and people doing things. That's what I used to do. Maybe, you know, it was a few years ago that I was doing that. But it, once I stepped away from that, had a bit of a holiday, was around living in London, traveling to the Riviera and all those fabulous places you can do from London easily. I started to slow down and I think, mm, geez, I was getting chest challenges, chest problems, um, bronchial problems uh, with the tail end of my first London winter. And so by learning this stuff, I was able to 
replace the reason that I was smoking. Because you, you, you look at the effect often with health issues and, you know, don't do this, don't do that. Well, you know, I knew that, but I had no tools that actually helped me stop smoking. And when I did that, it actually opened up another part of what I want to, some thoughts I want to leave with you. And that's about, because inner health is one thing, mental health and all, it's a huge, huge issue these days. But when I become peaceful and when I actually live this life, you become aware that there are things connected to what you, what is that old saying, you know, you are, you are what you eat. And I became aware of um, health, healthy living issues like um, cutting down on the drinking, which I don't think I drank much. I just uh, did what everybody else was doing. But when I found that by slowing your mind, by, by calming down, you start, I started to realise why I was smoking. <laughs> Sometimes that's a bit... Um, bit of a challenge but when you do when you open up space to do that then you can replace it with healthy eating options and vegetarian uh, life is and vegan lifestyles are now common when I started becoming a, ve a vegetarian it was like I had two heads um, but now with especially the move away from um, into vegan and vegetarian lifestyles as a as part of something I can do to help the environment and because there's nothing worse than watching David Astor David Attenborough give a, a reality check on the world's environment which is not is pretty terrible and that's what I do I'm a part of the world what I do has an impact so by exploring healthier eating options then you start to look into hey i can actually make a difference i can this whole process these whole strategies that you can do in your life you can do not someone else you can do you can make a difference and if you can make a difference you become part of the solution not continuing to be part of the problem so all these little key things these strategies that you can develop that suits you I'm not saying you know do what I did which was cold turkey because because I did need to stop smoking but once you start to do that you start to become aware and that's some of the wisdom that I learned through the Brahma Kumaris is that there are alternative ways of living that have a more positive impact not just on myself personally and the people around me but planet earth in general in a you know planet earth is like our mother and we're all children and the children have been misbehaving <laughs> quite a lot so just some of those key things i just wanted to touch on and think about it because without action without doing something it's um you know i'll leave that speculation to yourself so <clears throat> excuse me Now, what I want to do next is, for a few moments, I've talked about how to you create some tools that work for you. But what I wanted to do now is just another form of meditation. It's, it's about, again, all this is about using your thoughts. And by this next tool, this last exercise that we'll do together just for a few minutes, and then I understand Artie is going to be um, asking a few questions from you. Uh, very simply is that um, there's a process of another form of meditation called creative visualization. Because often people say to me, oh, this is your imagination. Well, yes, it is. <laughs> but again, it's a, it's a process to use. Uh, realistically use tools in your life and this relaxation exercise I call is called going to the ocean because what uh, creative visualization does it's an exercise for your thoughts it's about learning to focus and improve your ability to concentrate 
for longer than 15 seconds. So again, this is again using your own thoughts to create in the, the eye of your mind, the TV screen that is in your mind. And given that it's summer here in Australia, and often we talk about going to the beach, I live about 10 or 15 minutes from Bondi Beach and some of those southern beaches of Sydney and uh, it's fantastic. <laughs> so I call this the ocean. So we're going to visualize, we're going to practice, and this is an exercise for you. So again, just for a few moments, take a deep breath. And just again, stretch those shoulders gently and keep your eyes closed for this exercise. I'm going to deepen the ability to create an image of beauty and I'm going to do my very best to experience the beauty of what we're talking about. So this creative visualization exercise is a, um, another way to help control our thoughts in a much better way. So just imagine yourself, you're standing on a beach pure white sand just before sunrise. It's early summer and I feel the cool of the night starting to turn into greeting the sun as it rises over the horizon beautiful sunrise of deep crimson red clouds and the sky turns from dark of night into the beginning of a beautiful blue sky and we're all standing at the shore of this lovely beach and I hear the breaking of the waves gently just slowly moving forward into the water and it's so refreshing I feel the water lapping at my ankles and the water's very refreshing not cold and it's inviting so I Look at all of you and then we move forward, walking into the water up to our chests and we now begin to float in the ocean. The sun is beginning to rise higher in the sky and the water is so crystal clear. It's hard to tell the difference between the air and the water it's so clear so clean and I now put my head under the water and the ocean is embracing us it's welcoming us to this beautiful experience and I feel so refreshed and just floating just below the waves and I look down and I see so many fish as if it's on the Great Barrier Reef. Beautiful fish swimming all around and I see forests of kelp moving with the tide gently from one side to the next. I feel so relaxed. Feel as if the ocean is just refreshing my spirit, charging my battery.
and I turn around and head to the shore. And we're all walking away from the ocean up onto the beach. And the sun is starting to shine stronger drying the water and I just look down and see the waves again gently lapping at my feet and I give thanks to the ocean for this beautiful experience again gently open your eyes Put your hands together at your heart and say the word Namaste. Rubbing your hands gently, coming back to here and now, to this world that technologies brought us together. So those two exercises, if you practice those and use them in your life just before, in the morning before your day starts, a um, lot more people are working from home now. So that's a, a great way to begin your day, stop during the day and do this, uh, the Brahma Kumari, so this wonderful exercise called traffic control traffic of your thoughts so at fixed times in the day you can stop and just take a moment to reflect to go inside remember the experiences that we've had together this morning or tonight and then through this network of the inner space family that you can continue to learn more and more practical exercises that can help develop your strategies to not just deal with the world today, but to grow and to be, um, be happy. So that's in a sense, the essence of our talk this morning. And over to you, Artie, now. Thank you, Michael. That was really beautiful. Um, the first question is, what steps other than meditation can you take to seriously self-soothe in moments of high triggered anxiety and restlessness from emotional pain especially during times of needing to self-isolate as i am alone Yeah, that's a good question. Thank you for that. Excuse me. What I find is one of the best things, because uh, you can't always sit and meditate. <laughs> Sometimes your mind goes, oh. I find music one of the best um, helpers that we can have. And I'm not talking about ACDC live, you know, <laughs> live in concert. Um, there's a few um, oh, and there's some wonderful meditation music. There's a fellow called Brian Eno, an English classically trained musician uh, who has a series of uh, uh, different CDs on. He, he's like the godfather of ambient music. So mindfulness music, ambient music. And two of them I like, especially one's called Ambient 2, Plateau of Mirrors. Um, that's a series of beautiful um, uh, music um, performances that he's got with a fellow called Harold Budd, B-U-D-D. -D. And Brian Eno and Harold Budd together have collaborated on a number of CDs that many uh, people uh, that are under different levels of anxiety. And of course, if you're alone, um, it's hard, it's a challenge. So music, Vivaldi is also, I find, just stunning pieces of music um and again i can 
put together a playlist, I suppose, and share that with Artie. And there's a um, a Christian, a Catholic nun called Hildegard von Bingen. And she was a visionary from the 12th century in Germany from memory. And Hildegard's music is still sung and, and cherished today. Um, and again, in Europe, a lot of these this uh, music that can help uh, reduce levels of anxiety um, is available. And every, of course, everything's on iTunes or Amazon or the internet. So they're just a couple of um, pieces of music that I use in my own life uh, when as a balance to when you can't meditate or you want an additional um, help. That's that's something I'd recommend, Artie. Wow, brilliant um, and very practical. You can do that at other times very easily. Oh, easily, yeah. Yeah, very interesting. Um, your next question um, is, well, they're starting with saying, you seem to be very light and gentle. So maybe you haven't had any needed to experience this in particular, but they're asking, are there any ancient tools on dealing with mistakes without punishing yourself? Mm -hmm. That's such a good question. <laughs> One of the ancient things that I learned very quickly is uh, in English it's called past is past. Again, this is a, a question that comes from um, maybe from emotional pain, uh, beating yourself up. Um, everyone that I've looked up to and acknowledged and admired of, as being spiritual leaders have all said the only thing you can actually do about the past is change your attitude to it. There may be significantly challenging things in your life. And what I'm not, um, it's, it's a quite, you can't answer a question like this in two minutes, but by being present here and now, you can reflect on, if you would like to use the word mistakes, I prefer to use the word learning that everything that happens in our lives is like an education. And I can promise you, I, you know, <laughs> I didn't know this stuff before. And I, 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 to be honest, I feel I've been a pretty, you know, pretty happy sort of fellow most of my life. I've had challenges. I've, um, I lost my father when I was very, very young. Mum never remarried and, you know, wasn't a lot of money in <laughs> growing up. We weren't poor, but, you know, it was a bit tough sometimes. And I was working when I was 15, 15 and a half. I, and I went back to finish a level of education later in life as a mature student, uh, which I'd recommend to anyone do. Um, and I used to give myself a hard time about things. I used to blame myself for things. You know, it was my fault, all this sort of stuff. But really, you've got to change that transform that uh, from beating yourself up because you've made mistakes into recognizing that that's life that was an education that I needed to understand and then by putting the past putting a full stop to the past I can give value to my life now learn the what I need to learn from those experiences and do my very best not to repeat them mm -hmm. So uh, just giving yourself another chance, I guess. Is... Yeah, and learn to like yourself because you, 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 you're a, basically a pretty nice person, <laughs> even if you, you know, again, people have got to learn this self-esteem, this, that we've all got. I remember uh, there's a, an American, I love music, I adore music of all types, and there's a, an American, uh, Spanish-American fellow called Santana, Carlos Santana, and he was one of the first, after the Beatles went to India in the 60s, Santana and a lot of his compatriots were making music because they were med began to meditate themselves, and Carlos, I saw Carlos in London uh, perform when I first went to London, and he said that God made 
the world round so all her children could have center stage. And he used to get everyone to stand up and like wrap their arms around the world, your world with great love. And we need to really do need to love ourselves a little bit more than we do and not to beat ourselves up when we fall flat on our face. And it's never that bad. And again, there are two of much more eloquent tools to help um, uh, put the past behind you and look towards the future. Because if you're looking at the past all the time, you can't, you trip over <laughs> when, you, when you're trying to um, navigate your life to use these strategies to move forward. That's probably as much as I could share just at the moment, Auntie. All right, lovely, thank you. The next question is, you talked about how to heal your heart with your thoughts and you call this meditation. Yeah. Can you share a personal experience um, and the strategies and tools you used um, to enable to heal your heart? Well, I'll be very honest. Um... I said earlier that I lost my father when I was very young. Dad was 33 when he passed away. And um, I used to blame myself that somehow it was my fault. Dad left and I was the older son. And, and even though that wasn't conscious in my thinking, it was always underneath the surface. And when I I was very fortunate enough to meet Daddy Jenke, who was the, um, uh, who passed away early this year. She was the head of the Brahma Kumaris, and so she was the head of the international part of the BKs, as we call ourselves, when I first started studying. And to be honest, I had a beautiful, she was my first meditation teacher. And the first question I actually asked Daddy was, why did my father die when I was seven years old and I grew up without a father and she just smiled and that wisdom that anyone's had the fortune to meet daddy that gentle old wisdom and she just talk, told me about the journey of the soul that the soul goes through different lives different and when it's time for that soul to move on to its next part as she described it in the big journey of life you have to let that one go and it wasn't she said it wasn't your fault michael and i just sat back and just like wow <laughs> and as i've learned um over the years decades that i've been doing this is that things happen in our lives and if you focus on the sorrow then you become sorrowful you meditate on being unhappy and that is reflected in your state of mind. And when you learn, when Daddy first told me about the journey of the soul, I'd never heard that. Although it was a little bit familiar, I, I'd probably believed a bit in reincarnation, which is a, you know, which is an interesting topic. And it, it, what it did do, it just eased what pain I had in my heart and my soul about Dad's passing. And so, um, that's something, if I could share that with you, um, again, it's something that's a, that's a question that, um, you know, it's a PhD thesis just on its own, of study of um, how to, to let go of the past, how not to give yourself a hard time, how to start, start to see yourself with beauty. And you're not that bad after all. Back to you, Artie. Thank you, Michael. Well, um, the next question I have for you is, we are living, as you pointed out earlier, um, in anxious times in Britain. There's so much uncertainty. Is there something in your tool books that would enable <laughs> us to be maintain hope, particularly when our leaders are pretty inept? <laughs> Who'd be a politician these days, eh? It's funny, you know, I, 
to try to answer that question is this whole discussion this morning is about building up strategies to develop peace of mind, to develop a more positive and peaceful outlook, um, a more respectful outlook for yourself. And I only hand over my inner happiness and my um, exchange hope for hopelessness if I choose to. Um, I personally can't do anything, you know, the, um, about Boris Johnson's foreign policy and his, uh, the cabinet's discussions uh, about Brexit and negotiations and all these things. But what I can do is start to focus again. This is, I keep coming back to this point. It's, it's, it's so important that the more you learn about your spiritual journey, about some of the facts of life, that um, uh, I don't want to be flippant in making a statement like this, but don't read, don't watch TV too much. <laughs> There's a, a number of, I, I love reading about um, how people are successful in their journeys. And again, this is part of the strategy. The tools I'd recommend you is music, listening to, instead of watching the, the seven o'clock news, um, do something, you know, read a book, read, read a book about, you know, Mahatma Gandhi or read a, a book of, um, you know, some of Attenborough's uh, outlooks and, and, you know, there's so much positive stuff around to help connect my hope with. And again, this is a personal choice that you, you, you know, spend time looking again on the internet, looking for positive stuff. There's a, we have an Australian BBC called the ABC here, the Australian Broadcasting Corporation. And on their news app, they've got a, cho a, a choice, good news. And it's the most, um, more hits on that good news side than on the, um, um, on the traditional day-to-day -day news. And <clears throat> if I can become more hopeful and I start to see that demonstrated in my own life, then you, <clears throat> you start to replace hopelessness which is a pretty sad place really to inhabit, to change it, to read about, I mean, all, I mean, just the, the, you know, you're in ground zero culture in London and Europe, <coughs> excuse me, and focus on positive stuff. That's the key. Don't focus on the negative. Don't spend all your time looking at your news app or, uh, because that affects your state of mind. And you can give, and I, it's just something, uh, I'll leave this thought with you. When you meditate, when you do these um, practical exercises, take 50% benefit for yourself and through your heart, through your mind, through the nice experiences, donate that out into the world. They talk about, there's a great old Beach Boys song called Good Vibrations. Every thought has an impact, has a vibration. Again, that's a whole different discussion. If I can donate positive, peaceful, good vibrations to the world, to the world around me, to my inner world and to those around me, that's a much more, uh, much less destructive use of your own, the same, the same tools we're all talking about, your thoughts, your emotions, your feelings, and your awareness, when you turn that into a positive thing, then the hopelessness that some people can feel starts to be replaced by stuff that helps take me forward in my life. Thanks, Arti. Mm. The next question is, what, is um, what are your steps for developing a calm perspective in a difficult situation? is definitely not lose your state of mind. <laughs> it's That's probably the most challenging thing when someone's not, when someone's having a bad, bad hair day and they don't want to take it out on you. 
you can do a, a range of strategies that if it's a, if it's a severe experience with another person step away from that don't feel you have to change the world change everyone around you straight away that takes time and if it's a um, if it's certainly not a, um, a physical threatening environment or if the person that you, the, you're interacting with is not um won't listen or any, or just again they're taking out their bad day on you just step away go for a walk um, allow that person to calm down and again by not by maintaining your own self-respect that will ultimately have a positive impact in the situation and that's probably the biggest tool it's also the biggest challenge of dealing with other people and however we do need to do it we will live we don't live isolated on planet earth there's a few of us around so but again don't don't take it so um there's a um, a cartoonist in australia called michael lunig l-e-u-n-i-g i'd highly recommend looking up his website michael is um uh, he's a manic depressive like a lot of clowns are often people that are depressed um, and they do this extra thing but michael wright his cartoons are a stick angels and the one i like the most is angels can fly because they take themselves so lightly nice very very nice um earlier you spoke about loving yourself Yep. How do you develop love for the self? I remember there's a an English Russian actor called Peter Ustinov, <clears throat> and he came from uh, Russian royalty and had a very successful theatrical and film career, and he was one of the first ambassadors that the United Nations um, Save the Children used. They like now there are lots of uh, Roger Federer, all these successful. Um, actors and musicians and sports people they um they're ambassadors for things and peter was in sydney once doing a performance as many years ago and the press were, were really trying to rip into him and you know cynical so and so as these reporters are and they say well how can you do this and you see the world as it is and you all the time talk about positive things and hopeful states you know what do you say to that and peter just a very studious fellow leaned forward and said the alternatives dear people are too horrible to contemplate be positive be happy be peaceful, try and do something positive. And that's something that's always stayed with me. Um, if you, I'm sure if you look up Peter Euston on, you, on YouTube, you'll see some of this fellow. He was just a, 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 um, a hopeless optimist. And he, it's infectious when you, uh, you know, you hang around people like that. Again, hang around people that are going to take your life forward rather than not. Mm. And then you learn to love yourself. It's really important because we're not that bad. <laughs> there's always something good in everyone. If there's something you dislike about in yourself, how do you get over that? Simply change. If there's something that you really don't like about, if I don't like about myself, I really, um, some people are good at writing notebooks and stuff. I'm, t I'm hopeless at it. Um, I get to about half a page that I do something else. Um, really simply, if you if you there's something you don't like about yourself, sit down in a little meditation exercise, a little space, just you and that part of you that you don't like. Work out what it is. And again, don't spend too much time doing this sort of stuff because otherwise you you miss out on the plus. The plus is the positive stuff. Um, and just say, well, what is it that I don't like about me? What can I do to replace what I don't like? And then to move forward. It's as simple as that. Replace 
what you don't like with stuff you do like. Hmm. And that's, uh, I'm a hopeless optimist. I'm sorry to admit, Artie, but because um, otherwise, you, you know, don't even ask, don't even go down that path. And it's, again, this stuff's not either a, abseiling off the Sydney Harbour Bridge is probably easier than doing some of this stuff. But however, it's it's a lot of fun. And again, you the big thing is that you meet like a lot of people. I don't know how many people are here listening to the today's talk, but we're not alone. There's a lot of people on the journey in different ways of different faiths, of different beliefs, and they're doing some fantastic stuff. Focus on that. And then you find the stuff that you don't like about yourself starts to be replaced. You start to focus on more positive things. And then that becomes your nature because that really is who we are anyway. Beautiful shining lights like stars in the sky. That's actually who we are as spiritual entities. And our physical bodies are male, female, um, black, white, and everything else in between. And they're the things that you start to learn that become your toolbox to go into. And again, you can't talk about it all in an hour or so. But you get the gist, you get the, the flow and the networks that everyone that's listening to this talk this morning, as I am, because I learned, I do this because I learned something new every time I do this. And we're not alone with lots of us around doing stuff and that's it. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. That actually brings us to the end of the event this evening. Thank you all very, very much. And we look forward to seeing you next week. Michael, thank you so much. And I hope you have a great day. Namaste. And the same to you all. Namaste and Om Shanti. And Thanks for the opportunity, Artie, and to everyone that joined us uh, tonight. It was an absolute delight. I learned a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Bye-bye.